Anyway, hello. What's up, people? I am back for another video. Um, today, I am reviewing uh, The Last Starfighter. Um, a friend of mine, Mara, almost gave me the idea since she did a discussion stream, and I will link her channel in the description. But I figure gave me the idea, and I didn't really have anything to review today anyway, so I figure why not do that movie? And because it has been, I, I watched it as a kid. Um, like, I think it was, like, one of the movie channels, but I didn't really remember it. I, I remember the concept, you know, and I remember certain scenes, but I didn't fully remember. So re-watching it last week, I forgot how good it was. It's just the simple premise. It's literally every kid's dream. Like, you know, you have this, you know, Alex Rogan who lives in this trailer park, right? And, you know, he wants to do more with his life, but what he's good at is at this game Starfighter which you know is a fictional game in the story that it actually turns out to be a recruitment tool for you know aliens that who, who you know so he could prove that they could be the, the next Starfighter and Alex beats it and, and then he you know this is where he meets Centauri fun characters very much you know and the, it definitely is it very much is in the vein of Star Wars, for sure. At least the original, I would definitely say, like, you know, Hero's Journey. Because him and Luke, arguably, fucking, you know, I, you know, y'all know how I feel about Star Wars right now. But if I just definitely had to do the comparison, it definitely is similar. Like, just that Hero's Journey. You know, Alex wants to do more, but he gets the chance. But initially, you know, obviously he turns it down. And it, you don't blame him, though. Because if you think about it, because obviously he thought, oh, it's just a game. And then when he learned it's real, and then obviously he kind of realized, like, what's at stake? Yeah, he could lose his life. Like, you're fighting in an actual battle, in actual shifts. Yeah, where you could fucking die. So I, I really like that they definitely make you understand his perspective. But it's definitely just an all-around fun story. You know, fun characters. Um... You know, one of those movies, like, where, yeah, it's just a wholesome... The concept, though, is out there. That's why I say it. I'm probably going to title it Every Kid's Dream, because it really is that. Like, you know, kids play video games. And they're like, okay, let's take that idea, but actually, let's make that video game a recruitment tool for aliens that can fight in an actual battle. And I actually think they did a really good job with the space battles, too. Yeah, the, this is one of the earliest movies that did CGI at the time. And, yeah, like I said, the CGI isn't... Because I did an original take and it fucked up. But the CGI isn't necessarily the best. But it's fine. It's 1984. That's one of those things I can kind of get over. When you still have a great story, you have fun characters. Maggie, his girlfriend, um, isn't actually a fun character, too. Because usually these kind of movies, you don't... You, let's be honest. You don't really care about the girlfriend for the most part. Like... I like I'll I'll bring I'll bring up another example. Back to the Future. I love those movies. I don't really I've never really cared about Marty's girlfriend. I, I to me she was just kind of there. So but she act but uh, back to this movie. Maggie's actually an all around fun character. She has even her own arc where you know whereas Alex is ready to leave, she doesn't want to. She uses her grandmother as a crutch. And the way they're able to weave that kind of story to not make it feel like it's just dragging down the, the main plot. And the main plot is simple. Yeah, like he, you know, he gets into this battle. Initially, Alex doesn't want to do it. But then when he sees Centauri get it, end up dying. And um, another fucking um, fun thing about this movie. I love Beta Alex, which is this robot version of him that's supposed to, while Alex is in space... They send this beta unit so he can stand in as Alex because um the um um the Kodan Amada and Zer send assassins to the last starfighter because they you know they learn of what happened so they can send it to the last starfighter so there's no hope for Rilo. And uh, I love the just the, the designs, you know, even though yeah some of the alien designs aren't obviously the most original, but they work. It works for this movie, and I 
just think all around is just a fun flick. And I think that this is one of those movies. I'm happy it was a one-off. I understand they have an idea for a sequel, but for me, it doesn't need one, especially now. This isn't like a slasher where you can like do a 40, even like something like Top Gun, where you can do a time jump of 40, 30 to 40 years, right? I just don't... I think, yeah, Zer ends up escaping in the end, but, okay, what, does he come back? It would also, it would just feel like, okay, then what, he leads another armada, and they need to do the last, last star fight? No. Uh, I'm cool with this one being it. And even on, even if they did a sequel at the time, I just don't think it needed one. I, I'm cool with leaving it up in the air. The ending is very beautiful, in my opinion. You know, Alex, you know, after defeating, you know, because he ends up having, agreeing to work with Brylos to rebuild, you know, and work on new, the new fighters. And that means he has to leave Earth for several years. And he ends up going back, um, you know, asking Maggie to come with. She, event she initially doesn't, but then she decides to, to do it. That ending is so awesome. Like, just because of how wholesome it is, like, that she ends up going with them. The music is beautiful. Like, the music is perfectly timed. Like, the music isn't just something good to listen to, but it also works for, like, the scenes. Because to me, that that's uh, the one of the things. If you want to have an effective score, you can't just have good music. Because there, there, there's a lot of... There's movies out there that the score is good, but it's not timed good at all. They just play the music randomly. Like, good music, but it's not timed right. Like, if you can actually have good music, but actually time it right, and I think this movie does, like, especially in the end. The music in the end is so fucking awesome. It's just all around. The music is just great. The space scenes are great. I love that at times they make it look like you're actually doing a video. Because at that time, you know, video games are kind of fps you know, because that was just the technology then. I like that they made it like kind of like the video game where you're like you're in the ship and you see like the ship kind of the, the schematics and all that shit. I really like that they did that in in you know when when Alex in the ship and Grig is a great character that he ends up working with, and the fact that Nick Castle directed this movie, OG Michael Myers is such. That's I didn't even know that when I found that out last week. It's like wow. Yeah, it. This movie is great. I definitely recommend it. Nine and a half out of ten. I'm happy to watch it. I'm probably gonna watch it every now and then, cause it's just wholesome. Yeah, you know, I'm definitely. You know, all know me. I like violent shit and shit on the darker side. But I'm I'm all for a fun movie like this every now and then. You know, just simple plot, very wholesome. Cause yeah, it's very much a kid's even. This is one of the f those movies that actually doesn't have an annoying goddamn kid actor in it because Alex's younger brother named Lewis, and he's honestly a fun... He, his reactions and stuff is genuinely what I can believe a kid at that time would react like. You know, when he would see the aliens come, like when he saw Alex coming down in his ship, he just was freaking out. Or when Alex was... Uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when Alex actually beats Starfighter, and you have like the entire fucking... Um, trailer part like everybody there coming and watching him and supporting like you can tell like it's one of those movies where you can tell stuff has happened before but we don't want to fucking beat it in your head you know and all these characters genuinely feel like a family so I actually yeah they just that's how you do it I don't understand how they could do it back then but they can't seem to do it now at least all the time they do it nowadays sometimes but you have to fucking look but all around, this is a great movie. I definitely recommend it. I'm happy I watched it again. And I'm happy I finally can, uh, can review it. So, um, But tomorrow, Live and Let Die review. Wednesday, um, how I would do the MCU. Just because I'm just... Because y'all know, I am actually a Marvel fan. I genuinely do like Marvel. But what they're doing with it right now, and DC. Because I'm going to do a, a DC one on the weekend of how I would probably... It's, so it's essentially a movie pitch, but it's not going to just be one movie singular. It's going to be MCU pitch, how I do the MCU. And then on, on uh, the weekends, I'll just jump ahead a little bit. And then on either Saturday, I'll try to do it Saturday, but if not, then on for sure on, on uh, Sunday, 
I'm going to do a DC version. I'm also going to try to do a Bands I Love to that day. I'm probably going to do Disturbed. I'm leaning Disturbed. I was going to do either them or Godsmack, but I'm leaning Disturbed, so we'll see. But I'm definitely going to at least do the DC video. But uh, then, so back to uh, Tuesday. No, Wednesday. The MC video. Thursday. Taken. Only the first one. I am not doing the sequels. And then, thir and then Friday, Hills Have Eyes Part 2, the sequel to the original. So that's my plan this week. And then Sunday, um, DC, uh, how I would um, pitch DC. But uh, other than that, we'll get started on, um, um, on uh, The Last Starfighter. So the movie opens up. <coughs> I like this really this introduction for Alex. Like you just see him living in this trailer park. You just kind of seeing what he does with his daily life. Like you know, he lives with his mom. He wants to get out because you know he's the only guy who has like you know he has to help around with the trailer. Because it's one of the things that like he was gonna go out with um his girlfriend Maggie and and their, and their friends, but he had to stay back because his mom had to work. Because he has to help, you know, work on people's, you know, homes in the within the trailer park. So I like that, like, this is just a good way to kind of establish what he wants to do. And one of the good things he's good at is Starfighter, which is this game within this universe. And, well, I, I like the little characters you do meet throughout the trailer park. I, like, I think uh, Maggie's grandma you see throughout the film is pretty fun. Um, the old man Otis, he's fun. Like, even like like I mentioned, Lewis, his little brother. One of the few like kid actors, especially at that time, because I I love the eighties, but there were definitely a lot of annoying fucking kid actors at that time. So it definitely was Lewis was one of the few. He actually definitely a lot of his reactions were kind of what I feel like a lot of kids would have been like if this were let's say real, right? But even when like I guess we'll just jump ahead a bit. Um, he, um, Alex gets denied, um, going to college, so that night he ends up playing, um, Starfighter, because, yeah, he couldn't go out with his friends, but he ends up beating it, and that scene where, like, everybody comes out in the trailer park watching him play is one of my favorite scenes. It's like, because it's just a good way to establish, oh, they're all kind of a family, but they don't have to be, because a movie nowadays... They would do like a whole 30 minute subsection of him trying to, you know, be friends and, oh, we have to hammer it home that he's, these people are family. Like we got to do this 30 to 40 minute section. No, they managed to do this scene within like the first, I, I didn't clock it, but at least 30, I'll just say 30 minutes, but the way they did it was much better, but they didn't spend an entire whole subsection on him talking to individual characters. It was just, oh, let's have them watch him play. Because you just kind of get the idea, okay, these people definitely, like, care about him just within, uh, I don't know. I just kind of miss when movies did that. Like, they didn't treat the audience like fucking ret like retards. They let us, like, kind of actually figure shit out. But anyway, so he ends up beating it. You know, things seem normal, right? But then Centauri comes down. This is where... Um, Alex, um, initially doesn't know what's going on. Centauri comes down in his cool car, which the car is fucking cool. Um, initially, you know, like seemingly a normal car, 
he asked, you know, um, Alex to come in because he won the game. And Alex agrees. And then they end up going in space. And, you know, the CGI work, it's fine. And this is where Beta Alex, the, the robot version who's supposed to, like, poses him because... Um, now, I guess we'll get to the actual plot when... Because Rylo is in danger, and they need the last starfighter to end up to defeat Zer and the Conan Armada to, before they invade. And I just like the simplicity of it. Like, and even the simplicity of the bad guys. They're not over the... They're not, obviously, the most... There's not... Like, they don't have a lot of background. They don't give you really any background on the Kodan Armada. Like, the, the specifically them. Or even Zer. Zer, you just get an idea that he turned on his father, who's the leader of Rilo. Um, and, but, so then they fill in Alex on what he has to do. And this is where Alex kind of starts to realize, oh shit, this shit is real. And that, the, and Centauri even gets admonished. And I like the little detail they added, like, that Earthlings tech, they don't think Earthlings are even supposed, should even be starfighters, so it was even, not even a, and that it was an accident that the, the, um, starfighter game was even in that trailer park, it was technically supposed to be in Vegas, so they even say it in a throwaway line, which I just kind of miss, too, even just throwaway lines, which, like, give you a background, but just, um, is a little line, you don't, it's not this big thing, but, but Alex initially turns it down, and it's like you understand it. It's like obviously there's a part of it you like you would like, because there'd be me like as a kid, yeah, you'd be like, yeah, fuck yeah. But then you kind of think about it, like, you know, as a as a kid, you're probably watching like, why the fuck would he turn it down? But then you kind of watch it as a grown as an adult. It's like, yeah, you kind of get it. Like, yeah, is it cool that you'd be fighting aliens and ship? But then it's like. It hits you. You can fucking die. And, you know, you have family. He has family that cares about him. Maggie he's thinking about. So it's like you're kind of putting all that in. So it's like you understand, you know. So, yeah, initially he turns it down. This is where, we, yeah, we meet Grig, who's a fucking, he's funny. Just, I would say this movie is just genuinely funny, too. Like, I, I laughed, definitely chuckled a couple times. Um... So Centauri ends up taking Alex back, and this is where we fully meet. Because the I'll admit the scene where we first meet Beta Alex, he's being made. I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of nightmare fuel. That was fucking nightmare fuel. But when we actually see him fully, he is fucking hilarious. Cause, and I gotta give it a Lance guess. I think he did a good job of playing a ro like a robot version of himself. Like he, you know, the way he changed the tone of his voice, like it sound robotic. And act like he had no emotion in it. And I like the way he acted. Like, yeah, he couldn't. He had to basically not act like a human. So, like, whenever he, he didn't know how to act around Maggie. So, yeah, he definitely got Maggie to be mad at Alex for real. Like, there's that scene. She slaps him. So, yeah, he ends up coming back. And this is where we get the scene where he meets the robot version of himself, which that was pretty funny. And even, and I like the little banter between, well, not banter, but. Luis wakes up and he sees fucking um, Robot Alex rebuilding his head and Robot Alex is telling him it's a fucking, uh, this is a nightmare, go back to sleep. I was pretty funny. Like, I think, like I said, the the humor is generally well done, but there's serious scenes. Was, yeah, while down there, um, one of the assassins that's sent to kill Alex ends up shooting Centauri and he ends up, you know, getting hurt. And this is where Alex decides to, you know, join in on the fight. And, uh, yeah, so he ends up agreeing. And while up there, um, I, I really like Zer. He was a fucking fun bad guy. Yeah, he's not, like, a serious bad guy. He's definitely a joke. Even to the Kodan, he's a joke. They're almost, like, just putting up with him just because they're using him as a patsy, essentially. But... They end up destroying most of the Ray, the Rilo forces, so they're now at fully the last starfighter, and they think they end up killing him. Cause down on Earth, I like the the the. Um, I also think this movie has really good pacing, like the way they can go back from like 
the scene, like, yeah, they're in space, you know, where, you know, Alex is doing his thing in space. But then they go back down to Earth for a bit. Oh, here's um, Robot Alex trying to fit in, you know, even, like, I, this is a bit later in the movie, but I like the scene where he's trying to hook up with Maggie, and he's he- overhearing one of his friends talk to his girlfriend, and you have fucking Alex copying it. It was pretty funny. But I, I like the back and forth, and even the, the, you know, or here's the villains doing their thing, so I like it. And the space battles are some of my favorite things, so um, Alex gets his ship, and him and Griggs end up going in a battle, and I fucking love the banter between the two. That was some of my favorite shit in the movie, was their banter, especially the, this particular one where Alex is like, we're going into a slaughter, because um, Greg told him, you're gonna go on your own, basically get the entire um, armada, and he's like, it's a slaughter, and he's like, and Greg's like, that's the spirit? <laughs> Oh, it's fucking hilarious. But, you know, he ends up, um, while this is going on, on the Kodan finally realize that the last Starfighter isn't dead because one of the assassins that is sent down there poses as a cop because this is when they go down to the lake because, um, you know, Alex and his friends are going down to the lake while he's hooking up, trying to hook up with um, Maggie, Maggie, you know, at this point is kind of realizing there's something up with Alex, and so he doesn't get Alex in trouble. He ends up revealing because while trying to hook up with her, he because he copies what um one of his friends saying to his girlfriend, and I guess his friend mentions the other girls, <laughs> and yeah, that ends up getting you know Maggie gets mad, so he ends up saying, okay, I'm not Alex, that I'm a robot, and while this happens, he ends up getting shot. And this is where we get the, the reveal. Maggie now knows Alex is in space. So they get in the, uh, they end up stealing um one of their, um, robot Alex steals um, his, um, basically one of Alex's friend's car or truck. And we get a car chase scene. Pretty fun scene. Maggie ends up getting out because, um, so to keep the cover that Alex is still alive, he ends up, you know, running into, because the, the, the alien was going to get in his ship and basically tell them that the, um, the Alex down on Earth is a fake. So in turn, and basically to keep the cover, he ends up destroying himself and kind of, you know, going out, you know, by himself. So he ends up, yeah, crashing the truck into the ship going out like a hero. And then while this is happening, Alex success Alex ends up Alex and Griggs end up successfully defeating the Armada while Zer is about to be executed. He ends up escaping an escape pod. And yeah, the Kodan Armada are defeated. Alex is, you know, the hero. And when they get back to Rilo, he's asked by the leader himself to um and it because there's a scene where centaur you think he dies which you know was an emotional scene and then actually turns out no he actually survived we get that reveal which is a very well done reveal and yeah so they ask alex um if he wants to um So yeah, he ends up getting um, the reveal like, um, yeah, he was alive. So he ends up after that, Alex agrees. So he ends up going back home. This is where you get the scene where Maggie, you'd think she's about to tell like, because, you know, his mom doesn't know what it, what's going on and where Alex is. So Alex ends up coming back and the whole trailer park now kind of gets picked. Pretty much no aliens are real. So Alex comes back down and tells his mom and the rest of the trailer park that he's going to go to back to Rilo and help, you know, with the building, meaning he's going to be gone for a while. Ask 
Maggie to go with them. And initially she declines because, you know, she used, and she, this is where she kind of reveals that, yeah, I am, she, she is using like her grandmother as a crush. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The scene where they finally see Greg, her grandmother has a fucking shotgun. <laughs> She's ready to shoot this motherfucker. It was fucking funny. But, um, um, but, um, Maggie decides to, because kind of like her grandma basically says, I can kind of, I'm I good on my own. So Maggie agrees to go with him. And it's just such a beautiful ending. And then the music is playing. And, you know, they're being lifted up on the ship. And, it, and then, you know, it goes into the credits. It's just great. And for me, I'm cool with them not being a sequel because it can just, you kind of can just, in your head, oh, they, what, what could, I, just, I don't know. I just think in your head is better than what we could have gotten, what we would have ended up getting anyway. But anyway, I love this movie. I think this movie is awesome. It is every, it's definitely just every kid's dream. And Lewis, like, and even in the end, I love, like, while Alex is going into space, he ends up like, okay, I'm going to play the Starfighter so I can go into space. Because that's what most kids probably would have done when they saw that. Show. Okay, I'm playing that game now. <laughs> so it's like, I just think it works. It, the music, the characters, um, even the villains work. Um, I definitely recommend it. It's it's a fun one. It's just like I said, it's a wholesome movie. Like that's only all I could say. It's you know, simple plot. Not like the fact that it's directed by the original Michael Myers to me is kind of crazy to me. So. But nine and a half out of ten, I love it. This is this is how you do a movie. I think anyway. But yeah, so I really like it. I love it. I'm definitely gonna probably put this on my watch list every now and then. I'm definitely gonna put this on. It just even just for the soundtrack. It's just so good. So um yeah. But other than that, I'm tomorrow live and let die review, but that's really all I got tomorrow. But um, talk to y'all tomorrow. Take a hit and peace out. <laughs> As usual, <coughs> talk to y'all tomorrow about Joe Biden.